Paul from Australia, who has stayed up late for our benefit. He is from the uh, CG Cookie group, and he is an extremely talented um, illustrator and Blender user. And he's going to show us how to use the Blender Grease Pencil feature to create illustrations. So take it away, Paul. Hi, everyone. Um, Paul here. Yes, uh, thank, thanks, Mo, um, for the intro. And so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be trying to complete an illustration here. And as I do it, I'm going to be showing you a lot of the features uh, inside of Blender's Grease Pencil tool and, and how sophisticated they've become. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's... Yeah, when you think Blender, you don't exactly think, oh, it's an illustration tool. What, what I've got here is a, a grease pencil object, okay? Uh, and I've got a camera. Let's take away with that one. I've got a camera that's pointing at it. So when we take a look through that camera, it's pretty much just like a, a plane that I'm drawing on. Now... Um, if you're familiar with Blender, you know that you've got things such as uh, object data properties. Now, with the grease pencil, these object data properties uh, can look more like a traditional 2D um, paint program. We've got layers. Uh, we've got some blend modes for those layers. Uh, you can add some adjustments or uh, you know uh, things to do with strokes and 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 some more sophisticated things, which I really won't touch on uh, today. Uh, but in the main window, there's a bunch of modes, uh, and the one I'll be obviously exploring today is draw mode. So I have created this sketch layer. So if I enable that, see that at 100% opacity, it's nice and, uh, and bold. Uh, but I can sort of drop that down so that I can create some inks on top. Now, uh, just like with a 2D painting program, you've got the option to lock, unlock, view, uh, and make invisible uh, any of these layers. Now, uh, Grease Pencil is also an animation tool, but I'm not an animator, <laughs> and so I can't really go into those. But I have utilized these animation tools. Uh, there's a dope sheet here in which I can actually show you that I have used this to create a few uh, sketches and uh, this sketch layer is one single layer but on each of these frames for this animation I have re-sketched something so I'm actually using each frame uh, to sort of house a different sketch. Uh, here, here is a completed sketch uh, to, to give you an idea and this one has got um, these layers filled in, such as the inks and highlights and so on. And the other thing that is really cool about something like Grease Pencil is that it integrates really well with stuff in a 3D environment. So, for example, I have this plane here and a light that if I zoom... Okay, now, now we're working, right? This plane actually has a texture on it uh, that I created. Now, I'll just show you briefly how this texture works it's a it's it's a half tone uh, thing that i kind of rolled myself it's just a bit of bit of math and uh what it does is it creates this half tone pattern so if i was to take away this illustration right first off if we select this light i can move this light around and the light dynamically interacts with the shader okay this is pretty much just blended doing what Blender does. And so this shader is all housed in this little node group down here. So I can do things like create a very low resolution halftone um, effect. I can change the angle of that halftone effect. I can um, do things like have the light affect the color. Um, and also the intensity of that halftone can be adjusted. But this is just some shader math which isn't really sort of important into what we're going to be uh, doing today, which of course is drawing. So let's get back to the frame that I was going to work at, work on, sorry. And uh, where is 
this frame. Here it is. Now, what's going on? Oh, yes, that's right. I need to see my sketch, obviously. So I'm just going to go straight into inking here. So I'm going to go into draw mode. And uh, looking through my camera, I can zoom in. I'm just using my middle mouse uh, wheel to zoom in and out there. And I have a couple of preset brushes, as well as some custom ones that I created myself. Now, just briefly, I'm just going to uh, show you that these three brushes, pencil red, pencil blue, pencil gray, are pretty much the same brush. And a brush, uh, let's see, if we go here, uh, can have a texture on it. So this texture here is a, a graphite texture that I actually created in Critter so that when I draw, you can see that the out outline is a bit, of a bit rough, so it kind of looks like a graphite pencil drawing across some paper. Uh, so you have the ability of creating some custom brushes, but some of the um, straight out of the box brushes, such as these ink tools, are really cool. Now, again, I've created a bunch of materials that uh, I won't need them all, but um, I've sort of made this my default. I've just got a bunch of solid uh, strokes and materials that I can use. And uh, furthermore, you've got the option to add a color attribute to that material. So, for example, if I was to draw this material, um, and not have any color attributes. So I'm just gonna go into, um, no, I'll leave it here. Right, as normal, the stroke base color is black, but I could make that stroke base color something like this blue or even this pink, right? By selecting a color from a palette in the color attributes um, menu, and it allows us to do things like change the color of a stroke without necessarily adding another material. So it's sort of like a two layer system. So it's basically grease pencil going, okay, we're gonna use a material like you're used to creating material in Blender. And then we're going to add an attribute to it that you can um, you know, have over the top of that material. So without much changing of the uh, default ink pen, I've got some settings here under advanced and stroke, uh, under post-processing and even stabilized stroke, which I find extremely handy, so that I can go in now and begin to create some inks. So I'm going to, let's see, uh, on my Wacom tablet, but I can uh, scroll the radius of that, and so I can bring this down to something that's a little bit more manageable. Maybe that's good. So I'm just going to erase those strokes and start again and begin to ink in some of these strokes. Now I'm gonna work fairly fast. Um, uh, I was thinking of, <laughs> of doing a, um, uh, a video that would be like time-lapsed and very well presented, but I, I sort of had a few obligations to get to. So you're stuck with me drawing in real time uh, today. So uh, I'm gonna try to get as much of this uh, illustration done as I possibly can in the time permitted, which I think we're about, oh, what, 10 minutes in? Yeah. So uh, I'm just going to go in and uh, and get some of these lines in and uh, and sort of just talk it through as I, as I go. So working with Blender is much like working with, say, a vector program like Illustrator because um, you're not creating bitmaps, you're creating strokes with points. So if I was to say, go into edit mode and say, select one of these lines, these look very much like vertices. So I can do things like subdivide that line or do things like smooth out that line. And um, sometimes it gets confused between the mouse and the stylus. So it's like just going, Paul, just pick one. So um, I'm going to use this smooth setting to smooth out that line, um, basically to show you that um, these lines behave like vectors. So, for instance, I can uh, do things like 
scale the thickness of a line and using things like proportional fall off. Let's just go with connected only. You can just go say Alt S and more easily, and just right click there, edit a line like this. So let's say we wanted to fix up this, this mouth area. So just get a sort of a more clean look. Now with these teeth, obviously you want those lines to join in. So I've just sort of gotten used to just putting down lines and then um, just uh, adjusting them. So I'm just gonna go with Control J, much like other Blender functions, a lot of these functions for grease pencil will allow you to do things uh, like uh, join lines and, and, and so on. Now, uh, sometimes I can really muck up a line. Uh, so there's this uh, handy little tool on the stroke called normalize thickness. And what that does is just like make everything an equal thickness. And now I can kind of cheat by going Alt S, scale down that line, and then maybe select a point over here. And because I've got proportional fall off, I can smooth out some of those uh, thicknesses to basically make it look organic or like a really nice stroke of, of the pen um, without doing too much more. But like it, it's a lot cleaner that way. So uh, then it's just a matter of uh, just going in and inking a lot of stuff. And uh, sometimes I've got to make some decisions as as I ink. Now, I am using a Wacom, so uh, pressure sensitivity is available to me. So if I, you know, press lightly, the pen tool responds. And uh, if I need to get a thicker line, I can do that. And of course, if I'm not happy with it or it hasn't responded correctly, I can always go in and uh, into edit mode and just sort of adjust those lines uh, a little further to to make them look as I wanted. So uh, th these inks, I think they're going to be fairly easy to, to do. So I'll, I'll continue along. Now, I was given the option that uh, if people have questions as I'm drawing, uh, you're most welcome to ask them. And if they're sort of relevant to what I'm doing or you've got something specific, I'll see if I can uh, show you something a little bit more specific to your questions. So uh, feel free to, to go ahead and, and, and write some in whatever chat uh, is available to you. And, uh, and I'll see what I can do while I try to get these inks uh, done as well as possible. So this is definitely going to need some smoothing here. Oh, I don't, but I want that to be nice and sharp. There we go. What tablet do you, recommendations do you have? That's a good question, Emma. Uh, thanks for that. Look, I am, I can show you on screen if you can see my tiny little picture. I've actually got a very old uh, Wacom Intuos Pro. Uh, I've heard really good things about the Huon. Basically anything that allows you to have some pressure sensitivity so that you can get some variance in your line work uh, will work just fine. It's pretty much the same as with any drawing program. Uh, so I, I hope that answers that question. <laughs> that that does tend to come up a lot. Okay, let's get these. Now I'm just going to go and dissolve that point. Let's smooth this out a little bit so it's uh, oh might need some subdivision there smoothing. Great. So I might have to uh, just focus on maybe one piece of this illustration, and then I'll sort of show you uh, how a finished one looks so that I can sort of show you some of the, um, the, the, the method techniques for certain parts of the illustration. So yeah, I, I tend to like a simpler style. Uh, just because it's, it is easier to demonstrate. And uh, I, I sort of worked on a sketch that would look good 
uh, first uh, before doing the inks and, and, and colors and, and, and whatnot uh, for this. So, you know, the inking process can be fairly time consuming, but it is probably one of the more satisfying parts of the process. Okay, we're going to get this. Uh, and I, I like space buns. I, <laughs> uh, I like characters that, that have this kind of hairstyle. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun to draw. Um, and as I go, I can always do a little bit of adjustment on line work. So the way I work is instead of drawing and redrawing, I, um, I tend to draw a line and then correct it. Uh, that's sort of my method. Now, I think there's something wonky here. I can see it. I'm pretty sure you can see it. I'm going to hit control one and flip it. So I can see that already. Wow, that's uh, that's that's not looking great. So I'm going to do a lasso select on that mouth. L to select linked. And let's just move this mouth uh, a little bit more central so that we can... Um, adjust some of these features so that they're a little bit more balanced. This is a technique that uh, a lot of artists use or should use because we all tend to have a bit of a bias when we're drawing, whether it's sort of more left or right. And so flipping an image or mirroring the image is something that uh, I tend to do. And, and if, if you're just sort of starting out it's, it's probably a good idea because it will make you very aware of where your uh, bias is um, so that you can better, you know, uh, compensate for that. So I'm just going to keep that there. So I'm just going to go back and that's already looking better. So if I will say to remove that sketch, that face is looking a lot more balanced. Uh, and and I'm, I'm really liking uh, what's going on there. Question from David. How does erasing half of a line works in grease pencil? Half of a line. Hmm. Well, there's a number of ways you can do erasing. So uh, I'm just going to go over to the uh, erase tool here. Now, the erase tool has got some presets uh, like all the other ones. And they fall under basically erase hard erase point, erase soft, and erase stroke. I tend to have this on erase stroke so that if I don't like a line, I can just go bang and the whole line erases. But you want to erase part of that. Remember that this, if I go into edit mode, is made up of lots of points. Now, depending on the density of those points or that line, you can um, say lasso select them in edit mode, something like that, go delete like X and points, or if you don't want to change from draw mode, go over to something like erase point. And now we can just sort of erase each individual point. And so it will erase just the, the parts of that line um, based on the points that you're working with. So obviously, let's just go ahead and undo this. Let's say, for instance, let's, let's get a bit of density in here. Let's go subdivide few times. So now you can see how that line is very, very dense. I'm going to go back into draw mode um, on erase. And now if I erase those points, it looks a lot more organic. That's because the resolution of that line or the, the point density is a lot uh, bigger. So it's going to look or feel more like erasing out pixels or, or a bitmap. So that's one way of doing it. And of course, you've got things like erase soft, which kind of plays around with some of the opacity as well. So it feels more like an eraser. Um, but uh, for my purposes, because I do generally like to paint um, in vector, uh, I tend to have it on erase stroke because I'm definitely working with, with strokes a lot. So I'll just continue to get these inks in here as much as possible. What's my favorite keyboard shortcut? Ooh. Uh, let's see now. Do I have one? Um, I'm going to have to get back to that, <laughs> Isabella. If, if I find myself one, uh, using one over and over again, that's probably it. Um, 
when it comes to grease pencil, I I kind of go backwards and forwards because a lot of them are with the mouse. And uh, just a fun fact, uh, I got one of these things, which is called the Toolbox. Um, and this allows you to assign any keyboard shortcut you want to. And it's sort of like an, an organic controller. And you can sort of use this instead of a keyboard or a mouse. And sometimes uh, I like to use that and I kind of completely forget what that shortcut is. So uh, in terms of keyboard shortcut, hmm, uh, I'll think about that one. <laughs> if you see me using one over and over again, I guess that would be it. Okay, so let's get some of these lines in here. Uh, and yeah, uh, but I do, I do highly recommend using something with pressure sensitivity. Now, uh, I know that a lot of sculptors uh, are good with things like grease pencil because it does share a lot of features with the sculpting brushes that you find in Blender. Um, so for instance, let's say I've got this line here. I tend to be a fan more of going into edit mode so that I can do things like Alt S. I guess Alt S might be one of my, uh, my favorites. Uh, Alt S because it, it adjusts the, the line of the thickness. But if you go into sculpt mode, right, we can get something like, let's see here, thickness, right? We've got a thickness thing. And if you stroke over, if you draw over it, right? Oh, that, that's kind of intense. So I'm going to make the strength of that a lot less and the radius uh, a lot smaller because I'm actually working on a fairly small scale. But in sculpt mode, basically you can do things like, okay, I'm going to just gently thicken this line by drawing over it and over and over it again. Um, I may have to go into edit mode and make this a little bit more dense. Let's go back into sculpt mode here. And maybe if I go subtract, I can etch out the thickness of that line, but I tend to go a little bit overboard. So it never really works out great for me. And uh, on, a, on a drawing like this, I do prefer to say, go into normalized thickness and cheat, cheat. Uh, is Can I say it's cheating? Um, cheat it a little bit and just sort of just scale those, uh, those points down to, to make them look like they were made organically. <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, so there's that. And so, but it, sculpt mode is definitely an option. Can you tell us a little bit more about the toolbox hardware you just showed off? Um, a little bit, uh, without sort of making this a sales pitch for it. Um, I actually did some testing for tour box. It's called uh, T O U U R B O X, and it's basically a controller. Uh, and all these buttons, you can assign whatever combination of shortcut keys for a number of programs to it. So I'm left-handed. So if you're seeing me, uh, my, my hand swapped, uh, I tend to use this with my right hand. And basically, it sort of fits on the palm of my hand. So I can actually use like these knob controls and, and so on and assign various uh, functions to them. So say, for instance, I wanted to do things like uh, toggle the, the brush thickness. Well, I can say assign it to this wheel here. And on the fly, as I'm driving, uh, as I'm drawing, I can just go, okay, I'm going to increase, decrease that brush, and I just keep drawing. Uh, or assign a, 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 a button to go, okay, I'm going to go to eraser from this button, and then toggle back to pencil, things like that. Um, it's a pretty good uh, uh, tool. Um, but I tend not to demonstrate it too much just because a lot of people are sort of coming to Blender uh, as beginners anyway, and then to sort of spring them into Grease Pencil <laughs> uh, and then say, oh, and by the way, I use this tool. It's sort of like a another thing that I have to demonstrate. So uh, yeah, look, it's it's a, it's a great tool. And, and the company reached out to me a few years ago to demonstrate this this uh, this little project of theirs, and uh, uh, yeah, look, I've, I've got a pretty good relationship with them. Uh, they they do some pretty good work, uh, and yeah, look, it's something that I'd probably recommend. But uh, I, I would definitely start with you know maybe getting yourself a, a if you haven't got one already a, a good drawing tablet that's affordable 
and like I said, has enough pressure sensitivity on it to allow you to do some really good line work. Okay, so where are we at for time? Okay, so we're, we're at uh, almost at the halfway mark. So what I might do is I'll just finish inking part of this drawing so that I can get onto the coloring component because I sort of want to show you uh, some other methods of, of, of drawing here because, you know, line work, yep, yeah, you get it. You're basically working with strokes, but uh, you can also work with fills and you can also work with um, textures as well. Uh, so I'll see what I can show you now. These arms, let me just flip this again to see if I kind of like the balance there. I'm just going to disable my camera from view, but not disable my camera from selection. I'm just going to go here to my object types visibility. There's a whole range of things that you can toggle on and off. And I'm just going to toggle the camera off there. And look, that's looking okay. Um, what I might do is uh, let's just join up those. Uh, so now this becomes one consistent line and we'll just smooth this out a little bit. Sometimes the ends of strokes don't do exactly what I want. And so I go in and I, I just sort of re-edit them a little bit so that their thickness is a little bit more um, consistent. Uh, and so, yeah, look, I can spend hours uh, doing cleanup and I haven't got hours. So what I'll do is I'll probably just say, okay, look, these inks are good enough. Why don't we get to some coloring? Obviously she needs some irises, doesn't she? So um, while we're here, let's go to a circle tool and let's work with a solid fill. Now you'll notice that this solid fill material has got this base color of gray, but I'm going to give it a color attribute of this black so it looks like a solid ink. This material, just gonna um, draw your attention to this, uh, just gonna bring this up here. If you can see it on your screen, there are always two components to a shape or a stroke. Uh, let, let, let's call it a shape, okay? There's stroke and there's fill. And uh, under both of these, you can select a line type uh, and a style. And the style can be toggled between solid and texture as well. And I'm just working for solids right now. So if I just have a fill material and no stroke, draw out a circle, okay? Uh, the first circle that I draw out, hang on, I'm just gonna zoom in here so I can really make it visible for you guys. draw out a circle, right? It's got the color attribute that I selected, which is this black from the palette that I've made. And I can uh, grab these two handles and further edit that circle. And then I can hit enter and it commits it. But this is a, uh, a shape and it sits on my inks layer. So I'm just gonna make this uh, sketch layer invisible. Uh, and I can go into edit mode and I can further manipulate that. And uh, this is why I really like um, proportional editing uh, on, because I can say, take a, a point and I'm just middle mouse scrolling in. Can you see that circle? That's the area of influence. And I've just got the basic um, setting, which is just a smooth fall off, but you actually do have a range of fall-offs depending on what you need it for. But the smooth works pretty good for this kind of style and I can sort of further manipulate that and if I even scale it, it it's going to do some really nice things. Um, but this is supposed to be the iris, It's uh, so I'm going to need an iris and a pupil. I did that with a solid, why did I do that? Um, I don't know but it gives me a good uh, option to then say okay you know what I made a mistake there so I'm gonna switch over in my materials properties to solid stroke. I'm in edit mode. Now you might've done this Blender users uh, with a shape or a shader or that sort of stuff. If you imagine that this is just a list of materials that can be applied to an object, these selected points, I can select a different material and I can hit assign. And now 
those points or that shape has been assigned the solid stroke material and the properties of the solid stroke material happen to be only stroke and no fill. Uh, now the thickness obviously is too thick, so I'm just gonna go Alt S and scale that down and I might even get a little bit of variation in here. Uh, yeah, I think it's usually thicker on the top, right? And I'm just gonna hit L, gonna hit Shift D and S to scale, and scale this down. This is gonna be our pupil and I'll do the reverse. Uh, with those selected, solid fill 100%, assign, and now I've got my solid fill on that iris. Shift, select one of these points, hit L. Now I can duplicate all of this, bring it over here, and with the R key, I can just rotate that slightly. And so sometimes uh, you can you know, fix up uh, inks just by you know, duplicating. Um, stuff like that so then back into um draw mode let's just get the rest of this hair in. oh i'm still in solid mode so i can either change the material from this drop down over here or my, my material settings and let's just go back and just bring those in now i'm just going to do a few of these little contour lines to show you sort of like that the space buns actually are made of hair and that there are hairs sort of texturing here right okay uh there we go and there there ah uh, yes now i'm going to obviously need some of that for definition instead of trying to draw an extra line here i'm just going to delete that point and bring this down back here maybe i will delete these points join these together Let's subdivide that a couple of times and let's smooth out everything. Maybe dissolve that point. Uh, you know, I don't mind that. Uh, it's it's kind of nice the way it's doing that, but this will probably have to be brought down because if you can imagine, this is almost like the sleeve of the jacket. Uh, and so I'm just gonna bring in a little bit of extra detail there. Now, this was supposed to be a zipper, so I'm just going to try to quickly ink this in. How are we for time? Oh, yeah, we're doing good. We're doing good. Okay, so let's let's get on with some colors, shall we? Uh, so uh, I'm going to leave this open-ended. Uh, I would have gone on and inked all of this, but um, I do sort of want to demonstrate how everything is working. So I'll just take off my sketch over here, and I'm going to lock off my inks, and I'm going to unlock my colors layer. I tend to make these layers as part of a preset. And so something like an illustration template, let's say, um, I will already have preset layers on there, but you can add or subtract layers as you go. So for example, we won't need this refine layer. So I can unlock that. And I've got a plus and minus here. I can remove this layer. Bang. But if I made a mistake and I do want to revise uh, some of those lines, I can hit the plus, makes a new layer here, and let's call that find sketch, right? Uh, and that sits there. Now, I can also move the order of those layers up or down, not by dragging it in the conventional way that you might see in something like Photoshop or Critter, but with these two arrows, I can bring a layer above or below another layer and that layering system works just like in a 2D program with one small um, thing to note. And that is that the stroke depth order by default is set to 2D layers, which means that whatever is at the top of the layer stack will automatically be set on top. But there is another setting here in the stroke depth order and that is 3D location. Let's put in color here to demonstrate what happens when we change that stroke depth order because this is where we kind of we can forget that we're working the 3d um application so i'm going to use this uh pinky tone for her skin and let's uh, go to solid fill i like to use the ink pen for this especially with a uh, stroke stabilize on and let's just etch out a shape here right there we go. Oh, hello. I think I've got a 
Yes, <laughs> I was going to get to the effect at some point, but let's just etch out some uh, colors here. Right. Again, I'm sort of going to rough out this stuff. Uh, is that everything I needed for that? Yes, it is. And of course, she's got some pink hair. So I'm going to etch out the hair. Now, I could, if this was cleaner on the inks, use the bucket fill tool. Uh, I tend to default to this method of coloring um, just because from my own sort of personal experience, sometimes just wrangling the bucket fill tool is a little bit more trouble than it's worth. But uh, if you're good with if you've got nice clean inks, then it's it's a lot more, uh, let's say, pleasurable. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to go to edit mode here because, uh, as you know, these are shapes. Now, I'm just going to close off that shape by hitting F because sometimes they're left as open shapes. And so I'm just going to grab that and I can sort of, if I've roughed out a shape, I, I can get fairly close with my estimation of, of these color, what are they called? Flats. Right. And then I tend to just adjust them to where they've got to be. And so um, my artworks can sort of take hours just because I prefer to have areas of block color, especially for stuff like this. Um, but you can sort of see that it's it, it works OK. And because our lines are very um, thick, let's say, um, it's fairly easy to manipulate these points and I dynamically increase or decrease the range of proportional fall off in edit mode using my middle mouse button. So let's say we grab that, I hit the G key, I can increase and I can grab a bunch of those points uh, to, to, to move into place. Right. So I think you, I think you get the idea. All right. So there's that. Now, uh, for example, let's say this jacket's supposed to be this lovely yellow color. Or is it? Is it? Oh, maybe we're going to go with this blue because we want blue and then a yellow top. Or no, actually, let's go yellow and then we'll go blue for the top. Or maybe we'll just choose a different color altogether. Now, I could just fill in those areas, but this sort of sits behind these other shapes. And there's a couple of ways we can uh, manipulate um, Grease Pencil to make that a lot easier. Now, let's see, is there a uh, draw strokes on back? So there, there is a draw strokes on back function. If I click here, now what happens is if I etch out this shape with the yellow, right, I can just rough this out and then let that go. And what's happened is that it sits behind all the other shapes that we're on. This is all on one layer. But if anyone has ever used Illustrator, you know exactly what's going on. Each of these areas is its own clearly defined shape, and they can all live on the same layer. You can separate them out by layers if you wanted to. Um, but uh, I tend to like to work in a more sort of illustrative style. So I'll have inks on one layer, flats on another layer, shading and so on. That's one way of drawing. The other one is, let's say, uh, for example, I'll just go edit. Say I wanted that block of color, for argument's sake, in front of everything else. Well, you can actually arrange those strokes by bringing each front uh, forward one layer at a time or do a nuclear option, bring to front, and then now this sits on top of everything else. And the reverse is also true, send to back. Now this sits behind everything else. Uh, and so depending on how you wish to work or what um, uh, blocks of color you need above other blocks of color, uh, then it could be easier to, to work in a variety of ways. But uh, again, you know, it's, this is where it, it really shares a lot of um, similarities with vector style program. So I guess Inkscape might be one. Now, um, I had mentioned 
there was a uh, layer ordering, stroke ordering, sorry, a depth order, that by default it's set to 2D layers. So just to remind everyone, we are in 3D space. And so uh, what I'm going to do is I don't want that point light. Um, right. Whichever direction we're looking at, everything that is on, an, on a, a higher layer or at the top is going to appear on top of everything else. But if we change that stroke depth order to 3D location, now we're going to see something interesting. First off, we're going to see a lot of what's known as Z fighting. You've seen this. Z from if you're in that part of the world. Um, and that's because all of these shapes occupy the exact uh, same Z coordinates. So they're all sort of zeroed at the same coordinate system. And this does have its functions. And the only way you can really fix this is, let's say we were to select in edit mode, this jacket color, right? We would physically have to, or physically, it's all virtual, um, have to go G and I'm going to hit Y. I'm going to have to move that in back, right, in the uh, depth for the, uh, for the object. Now, I'm just going to make this fairly obvious, right? So now that object is behind all the other objects in 3D space. Looking through the camera, the illusion is old, but if I was to say, let's say, arrange that and bring to front, it's not going to have any effect because now the stroke depth order is overriding that layering system. So I'm just going to undo uh, all of that. Let's see. Yeah, we're flat there and keep it there. So I tend to work in 2D layers for each grease pencil object. Okay, so uh, let's uh, throw in a few more colors here uh, real quick. So we'll get this arm in here. And sometimes I don't mind being too rough, especially if something is supposed to be on top or behind something else. Now, uh, the way I've inked this is interesting because I've put cut fingers on that one, but this one seems to be an entire glove. So I'm going to go back, edit those inks. Let's bring in that solid stroke. Let's go one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, question. Uh, how has your approach changed over time as Blender's features have changed or improved? Can you think of any big changes we should be aware of? Actually, yes. Um, let's see. A lot of the improvements are under the hood type stuff. So the way that you can join a stroke Seems like a no-brainer, but uh, a few versions ago, let's say we, we come over here, I go into edit mode, and I want to join these two strokes. A couple of versions ago, what would happen is that the order or where the front or back of that stroke, depending on how you drew it, would affect where those two points would join. Now, it's a little bit more intuitive. So if I do my uh, control J, it should... Um, do this correctly. So I like little things like that because they're not entirely obvious. They're generally the improvements uh, that, that I like the most. Um, are the other ones? Well, obviously, the, the really big one is the color attribute. A few versions ago, it was known as vertex color, um, but color attribute seems a bit more fitting. Um, when Grease Pencil was sort of just starting out, you literally had to create a different material with a different color for any of these areas. And so, for example, this uh, skin tone here, instead of having a palette, I would have to have one base color with this color and then another one for the hair. And my materials um, uh, properties would fill up, you know, huge. But I can just have a couple of materials here and as many colors as I want in a palette. Now, the default palette looks more like this, right? And so you can select at any point, okay? Uh, let's go back to the one that I created. I can also select a color swatch here and using my HSV tool, I can say, okay, well, let's say I wanted a top that's more of a light teal, okay? Oh, that's too close to that one. Maybe I make this 
Uh, yeah, look, maybe you'll make it orange. Orange. Uh, looks. Pick something, Paul. Okay. <laughs> so let's desaturate that. Uh, no, actually, we'll, we'll increase the saturation. We'll increase the value. Uh, and let's, let's pick a hue. Let's go with a very light blue, almost white. Uh, actually, yeah, let's let's go for a very pale blue, right? So I can do that. And then I can hit this little plus sign. Bang, this color has been added to my palette. Uh, you can also do things like bring in an image and extract a palette from it. It's really sophisticated that way. Um, also, there's always the eyedropper function. So I can say, select this yellow here, uh, or I can select this background blue and use that color um and so on so uh using that i think that is one of the, the biggest game changing tools uh in grease pencil that uh that i have definitely noticed another question can you export those drawings to svg yes you can uh let me see now um i think there is simply a grease pencil to F F svg tool let's Get out of object. Get uh, get out of draw mode. Go into object mode. Export. Is it? Is it? yep. There it is. Grease pencil to SVG. So uh, let's see this. And uh, just in case it's going to crash something, I'm just going <laughs> to um, go export grease pencil to SVG. You get the dialog box. You can save that, and then this SVG. Um, will be created. So you can bring that into something like Inkscape and further edit it. Um, mileage may vary um, in terms of uh, color or, or, or whatnot. Now I've got this object selected, active, selected, visible. So if you've got multiple uh, grease pencil objects and you set that to visible, all the grease pencil objects should be exported as an SVG. Um, but uh, I would I, I would try this out a few times just to see what that SVG looks like in another program, you know, how it structures layers, colors, uh, strokes, fills, what have you. Uh, it may have problems with, say, a texture uh, or things of that nature. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so that that is something that's that's come uh, along. Uh, and I, I also saw that Grease Pencil's PDF is there, but uh, I don't think it's great just yet and i still have to play around with that uh to uh, to, to be honest uh, another thing that i really like is that um grease pencil objects also respond to lighting so i'm just going to grab this light um uh, can i see the light here yes yep yeah, there, there's the light I'm just going to increase the uh do i need to increase the radius I'm just going to grab it here Right, this is a fairly intense light. So, so uh, the, oh, it's intense in terms of the, the, the power of uh, closeness. But what I like about lights is, let's say we're taking a look through this camera. I can grab that light and you can sort of get this nice airbrushed look by sort of just bringing that light close to the, the grease pencil object. You can also toggle which layers are affected by lights and which are not. So for example, if this light is affecting things like the inking layer, I can take this inks and I can uh, use lights or not use lights on individual layers on a grease pencil object. I'm just gonna undo this a little ways because the other thing that I really wanted to show, oh, let's go a few more steps back, right? is that I have this plane here, right? And so what it really excels at is when I do stuff like this, I can now grab this light and I can adjust it uh, to, to look more like this. So let's, let's go ahead uh, and go forward a couple of frames. Now, this piece is finished. Uh, it's a different pose, obviously. And there are things like shading. The shading has got a blend mode. This is set to hard light and I can change the opacity so I can adjust that shading. I've got one for highlights. I've got a blend mode set to add. And again, I can sort of adjust the opacity of that to make it look a little bit more subtle. Um, and also you can add things like effects. So this is a glow effect, right? Now this is sort of what gives it that nice kind of anime glow. Uh, and uh, you can really 
uh, go to town with various effects. Uh, there's, there's a few in there as well as things like modifiers, but uh, I didn't really have time to, to go into that. Rendering, I tend to do with the compositor. So uh, as always, you can just click on the uh, rendering tools over here and uh, using the compositor, I can also add in nodes. I, I like this one because what it does is it sort of does this nice little soften tool. So I'm just going to take that away. Uh, it, it look, on my screen, it's very, very crisp. And so uh, using this little soften filter, I think it's just on the filter. Yep. That one just gives it a little bit more, um, uh, almost like de-reses it makes it look a little bit more, I don't know, copy of a copy. And you can always add other ones like uh, an extra uh, fog glow in there if you wanted to, uh, so that it can really blow out. I'm just going to drop that threshold right down. Uh, or let's just bump that up a little bit. So it works overall. So this is, uh, and sometimes it <laughs> uh, does it sort of like a bit of a strobing effect here as well but uh yeah by adding extra nodes in a compositor you can then really finish the work um, and so that's basically a rundown of how i illustrate using blender's grease pencil so i hope you guys got a lot out of that uh yeah okay um thank you so much paul we had a lot of excitement and enthusiasm about this and honestly i'm like ready to go draw now on grease pencil so this was so great <laughs> thank you so much for staying up with us and taking oh. us through this oh it was, it was great no thank you for inviting me no and uh and like it's, it's really a pleasure to, to be part of this and, and the lineup that you have is just amazing too awesome bye cool <laughs> see you later.